Hi everyone, I'm Hillary. And I'm Chris and we're with Feel Your Wander. Today we're going to be doing a full in-depth how-to video of how we install our new base plate on our new Jeep so that way we can flat tow it behind the RV. So we used to have a 2021 Jeep Wrangler with a two-door Jeep Wrangler. It was a really great car, but it wasn't really great as our daily driver. So recently we decided to upgrade to a 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This is the Trailhawk edition. It's also the 4XE, so it's a hybrid. This model specifically can be flat towed. You have to check with Jeep though, because not all Jeep models can be flat towed, but this specific one can. So we had a blue ox base plate set up on our Jeep Wrangler. We can't transfer that to the new one. We had to get a new base plate to set up on this new car. So we, well, I say we loosely, Chris is going to be doing the install today and I will be filming him to show all the steps and process for how we get it all set up. All right, so let's take a look at the base plate real quick. So this is what Chris is gonna be installing. Where does this go exactly? I mean, this effectively goes behind the front fascia. So okay. we'll take all of the front fascia off, the front bumper off, which is behind the front fascia and replace it with this base plate. Yeah, and this is the BX1154 part from Blue Ox Towing. And so this is supposed to work for the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4XE with tow hooks. So we have the tow hooks version here. So hopefully we're gonna be able to get this all installed pretty easily. Again, we, Chris, will be able to get this installed. And uh, once we get it all set up, the next time we get going here, we will show you all how we actually flat tow it with the RV. So the first step is to start removing the top of the fascia. And so we've got these 10 little plastic rivet things. I don't know what they're called, but I call them rivet things, which we just have to pop out. All right, so we got the plastic rivets off. We take this piece off, Oops, we drop it, then we set it off to the side. And the next thing we do is underneath there is the uh, six torque bolts that hold the top of the front fascia off. So we're gonna take these six torque screws off. All right, so now that we have the uh, top plastic bit piece off, we're actually going to now begin to remove the top part of the fascia, which has got these six T40 Torx bits that hold it in. So one at a time. So after you get the six T40 screws off, you've got two 10 millimeter bolts to get off. All right, so inside the fender well here, we have five eight millimeter screws that we need to remove again to begin to remove the front fascia. So I have the wheel turned in just so it's a little easier to get to them. And that's all I can get to right now. Okay, uh, once you get the five screws out on this side, you have to do it on the other side as well. And you can see I turned the tire, the bottom screws are easier to get when the tire's out and the top three screws are easier to get when the tire's in. Now inside here, there is underneath the inner fender well, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right up here that hooks the top of the fascia to the fender. So we've now got to get that out. So I'm just trying to get the uh, 10 millimeter screw off inside of the, in, holding the inner fascia on here, the side fascia. And of course it's impossible to reach. <laughs> I can't get my fingers in there. And of course, because we're not at the shop that we have, we don't have all of Chris's tools. So he's having to use a bunch of other tools he had to buy at the store today. Not ideal. I got to use a manual ratchet. That's the frustrating part is one screw just took 30 minutes, about as long as the other 20 screws took. <laughs> I don't think it was quite 30 minutes, but it did take you a it while. It felt like 30 minutes. All right. So we finally got this last uh, screw out of the side, bolt, sorry, out of the side. Took a little longer than we than I thought it would, but uh, we did get it out. Um, so now we've got all of the screws uh, off of the top of the front fascia. We've got all the screws off the sides of the front fascia. We need to pop off these little plastic trim pieces, which are just held in with little clips. So you gotta kind of just be careful and pull on them. But on the inside, if you squeeze the clip, you can pull it out just a little bit easier. I know you can't see it, but I can show you here in a minute. Once I get it out, these little white clips are what I'm pulling off. And you can see if I pinch them from, from the inside, it just makes it easier to pull out. So we're going to pull this just back to about there. Going to grab a little rag as soon as I have one. And we'll stuff it in there just to keep it away from the fascia and do the other side. And then we'll climb underneath the Jeep and, and finish the bottom. 
All right, so we got the same thing done on this side. And like I said, I just stick this in here just to keep it away from the fascia because we're going to pull the fascia off. So it just keeps it from latching on when we're pulling it out. Okay, so we've got the bolts and screws out of the top of the fascia. We've removed the bolts and screws from the sides of the fascia, pulled back the trim. Now we've got uh, the bottom bolts on the on the fascia. So there's nine 10 millimeter bolts down there. So get underneath the Jeep, get on my back and pull up those nine bolts. It's a shame you don't have that little rolly thing to get under the car right now. It's a shame I don't have to, la I don't have a lift. <laughs> so I don't even have to get on my back. All right, so we got the nine bolts off the bottom and now we'll move on to a few electrical disc uh, uh, electrical connections and then begin to pull off the front fascia so at this point we've got all the bolts off top of the fascia all the bolts off the sides all the bolts off the bottom and now it's time to phone a friend because <laughs> pulling the fascia off the front uh, is a lot easier if you have somebody on either side so Miller, if you kind of grab that side we're just gonna the white part here yep this whole white part is all gonna just kind of wiggle off we do it right just wiggle it a little bit it's on see it's caught on that right there yeah. oh, oh there you go we're good we got it God, now it's off but okay now just look for any wires that are still connected yep there's one over here okay and i got one over here it's gonna leak oh. it's just water it's, oh, just, okay. it's gonna leak water for a minute and then just can you set her down a little bit just gently I still got a wire over here we got to disconnect but what are those wi wires for? these are just the wires for all the front sensors and for the headlights and the leds the uh, infrared all that kind of stuff so now just lift it up let's just lift her up out of the way there you have it now we're down to the front of the jeep you didn't tell me my hands were going to get dirty well they got soap <laughs> okay so the next step is we're going to take off our our two blue tow hooks uh they're held on with a couple 16 millimeter bolts right here and a big uh, nut in the back. So we'll take the front off. So I can pull the tow bar all the way out. So this is just to remove the tow hooks. Yeah, this is just to remove the tow hooks. They're just, um, they're kind of like long bolts here. They're just threaded in. So that was what I had taken off the back. So. But those will go back on when you're done. These will go back on when we're done. Just have to take them off uh, to get access to be able to install that front base plate. So. Now we'll just move over to the other side to do the same thing. So now we're just removing the tow hook on the other side, on the passenger side, and unthreading this two inch thread slowly but surely. Now's your chance to paint these tow bar tow hooks a different color. I like the blue though. I like the blue. It's almost there. And there we have it. Passenger side tow hooks off. Okay, so now we're gonna take the bumper off. This is ultimately where the base plate's gonna sit. It actually replaces the front bumper on the Jeep. So it's held on by these four bolts. So we're gonna pull these four bolts off. And then there's two really small 10 millimeter bolts that are holding it on now. So let's pick, pull those off as well. Now we've got the front bumper off. This is the, the only piece that we actually take off that we don't put back on. So everything else that we put, will take off goes back on or gets cut and modified. This piece doesn't go back on. All right, so now that the bumper's off, uh, we've got a couple of small things. We got to pull the horn off of both the front, uh, sorry, both the uh, driver's side and the passenger side. And then we've also right here, just got a pedestrian alert system. So again, it's just a couple of 10 millimeter bolts. So we'll pull all of that off really quick. It's okay just to let it dangle. Okay, so we've removed front fascia, uh, front bumper, uh, horn, all of the side uh, uh, little trinkets here. And now uh, it gets exciting. Now we actually have to cut out a section of the, f of the frame rail here to fit in the new base plate. So I've marked where we need to cut here with a white line. You can see it's not a, a super deep cut, but all the way down and then out again. So we'll use the reciprocating saw here and just cut through this white line on both sides. And you sure you marked it right before you start destroying our new Jeep. Yeah, you can always weld it back together. The good news is it's aluminum uh, plastic covered aluminum so it actually cuts pretty quick it's not like we're cutting through an old steel bumper so 
one thing I'd say is just be careful that you've removed any wire. There's no wires and things getting in your way because that's one thing you don't want to do is cut through a bunch of wire. Now, if I add the proper set of tools here and had a file or a, a nice little grinding wheel, I'd actually clean this up a little bit, but we're working in a, in a parking lot, so we're doing the best that we can. <laughs> we're doing the best that we can. So that side's pretty much done, and we'll move on to the next side. All right, so we've cut both of these pieces off. We've got these two little studs that held part of the bumper on for, for some reason, but they're tack welded in, I think, from the inside and we don't reuse them. So I'm just gonna use a vice grips and a hammer and just beat them out. Wiggle them a little bit, loosen it up. Vice grips, isn't that the name of that show you like? Vice grip something? Vice grip garage, that's right. <laughs> Derek, that's right. I think Derek would be proud right now. There we go. There's one, simple as that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now we need to trim uh, this plastic piece, probably uh, airflow for the radiator and stuff, so the uh, base plate will fit. I've just marked it with some with a white pen, and we're gonna cut it with a box cutter and a pair of snips, and trim it out of here. Get that side piece cut, bend it back. It's pretty straightforward. And we've got that on the driver's side, and I've already marked the passenger side, but the same thing. Okay, so um, we've cut the trim. Now we've got to make an access hole. We'll use this later when we uh, put the bolts through the frame and attach the base plate. So this is just a one and a quarter inch uh, hole saw, and it's exactly four inches in the four inches down from the top of the frame mount to the center. So hopefully quickly drill a little hole. Right where we want it. All right, so these nuts hold the tube on that the tow hooks are attached to the frame with. So we've got to pull these big nuts off. I've got a big crescent wrench that goes up to a little over an inch and a half and it's not big enough. So fortunately, we're gonna use a channel locks, which isn't the right tool, but they're not super tight. At least they're not for me. So I'm able to get them off with a channel lock. Sometimes fingers are the best option. I just can't believe you didn't have the right tool or a big enough wrench. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one off. Now we gotta do the same thing on the passenger side. All right, so now we're Okay, yep, so I think we now are at the point where we've got all the disassembly done. Now it's time to start to reassemble it. So once again, I phoned a friend. <laughs> Glad and, I could be of help. And if you can just help me lift this side up, we're gonna take, this is gonna line up with that right above the four there. So just like that, yep. That should slide right in there. Let me get the bolt started on this side. So just hold it? Yeah, just hold it for now. Okay, that's it. So we got those started. We're gonna put our, all four of them in. Um, we're not gonna torque them down yet. We're just gonna snug them up a little bit. And then uh, we're gonna begin to drill the uh, side holes to mount it to the frame on the side. So now we've got the original bumper bolts just snugged up. So we can begin to drill the side holes for additional mounting of this base plate, but you can begin to see how it's gonna come back together, how it's gonna look when we're finished. So we've got the base plate uh, mounted up and attached with the original bumper bolts. They're all uh, torqued down and Loctited. Now I'm gonna use the four holes that are on the base plate as a template uh, and drill a half inch hole directly into the frame so we can attach four more and we'll do four on each side. Okay, so we've got all eight of our holes drilled, four on each side. Now it's time to actually put the bolts and the nuts in. Because you're putting them inside of the frame rail, um, Blue Ox has done this really nifty trick where they actually tack weld this rod to the bolt so I can stick it down into the frame rail and come in from the side. I'll stick this in and kind of look down my hole to get it lined up and can bend these a little bit to make it just a little bit easier. So we've got one started. There's also a spacer but uh, it's slotted on the bottom so you start the first bolt and then we can drop the spacer down on top of that bolt. What are you putting on that? A little bit of uh, thread locker, Loctite, to make sure that they never come off. All right, you can tell from the shadows uh, that it took a little bit longer than I expected it to take. We got all eight of the base plate bolts 
installed, torqued down, uh, Loctited, uh, fully attached the uh, base plate to the frame. So now we're going to start actually just putting all the components back together. So I've attached the horn on both sides and our people sensor on this side. Uh, the next thing is to reattach all of the tow hooks, just like uh, we did when we took them off. Okay, these actually, uh, the tow hooks come with a new set of bolts because they're not attached to the the uh, front bumper anymore. They're attached to the base plate, so they got a lock washer and a nylon nut here. All right, so again, um, putting the ho tow hooks back in. They come with a new set of bolts and nuts. Uh, we got the bottom one, which is kind of complicated like the other ones. You go to thread it through the frame, but otherwise rather straightforward. And then just got to tighten up the back nut again. And then you just have to repeat on the other side. And then we just have to repeat it on the other side. You're so much help. Thanks for the kiss. And of course, Axel had to join in on the fun and help out. I'm not sure if he's helping. <laughs> Get him, Axel. All right, so we're pretty close to uh, reattaching the front fascia. We got the tow hooks installed. We got the base plate installed. We got all the accessories reinstalled. So now what we're going to do is uh, we've got to match up the fascia to this base plate so we can cut some holes in that fascia where our attachment hooks will pop through the front grill. So we want to make those cuts as little as possible. So we're going to hold it up here, uh, mark it with some paint and then get some snips and try and cut the front uh, fascia circles out. So we put the fascia up against the uh, Jeep and tried to mark where those uh, pegs and tow hooks are going to come through on each side. So now we're just going to clip it. It's roughly what we want. Put it in the same on this side. So we also have to remove this foam piece from the inside of the fascia. Uh, this used to fit when we had the original bumper, but it won't fit with the tow bar. So just take these clips off. Pull this little guy off and... All right, phone a friend. <laughs> Again. Yeah, it's probably easier if you get it from the front with me. And just let's line it up with the tow hooks and just kind of play it. This goes on top like that. Then we got this lined up and this lined up. It's looking pretty good. I'm just glad it fits. <laughs> of course it does. All that work if it didn't fit. Never a doubt. Now I got it on the tabs now so nice so now we just gotta fit it in but i'm just gonna loosely put a few of these back on the top so it doesn't fall to the ground while we're playing with it well let's see we just got to get these lined up i guess the opposite of the way that we took it apart try to put it back together there we go nice and then the same over here nice all lined up pretty lined up Bumpers, fenders look good. Gotta get all the bolts back in it, but yeah. So we just uh, loosely attached the fascia. We got the fascia on the fenders and just loosely bolted into the top. But uh, before I go any further, I wanna make sure that I hook up all the lights and all of the electronics. So there's only a handful of connectors. I think we've got two on this side and two on that side. So we'll do that really quick and then um, put the inner fender wells back in Put the screws back on on the inner fender wells and pop the uh, trim back on we should be getting close okay so uh, i'm still attaching the fascia we're now back under the jeep we're gonna put the nine bottom bolts back in one at a time here All right, so we got the fascia in place. Uh, we've got the bolts on the bottom attached. We've got the bolts on the top lightly attached. Just putting in the inner fender wall and the side bolts. We've got five uh, on each side. You get a couple here and then I'll have to have my trusted assistant turn the steering wheel for me so I can get to the other one. So if you could turn the wheels all the way to the left. Okay, so we got all the inner fender wells all attached and now we just need to snap the trim back in place all right so we have the inner fender wells all attached on both sides all we've got left out here on the side is just to reattach the trim so we'll just clip right back into where it started do that on both sides looks pretty nice 
All right, so we have, again, the bottoms all done, the inner fender wells are done, the side trim's back on. Now we just, we had all of the top bolts in loose just to hold it in place. So now just to go back and tighten all of these down. We got the six across the top and then the two 10 millimeters and uh, our bumper stops. All right, so just last few bolts here. All right, so we finished the base plate installation. Took us about five hours, I think, in total. Some of the bits took a little bit longer than we anticipated they were going to take. But we did it in our RV park, uh, in our spot. We did it with uh, just the tools that we have on hand, plus the drill bits that I had to buy. But, you know, it was a totally a DIY job. I think it's something that anybody could, could attempt. So the final piece here is the top cover. It's just held in with all the plastic rivets. So I'm just going through now and putting in the 900. It feels like 900, but the 10 or so rivets that we have, and then we're finished. So then the final piece of the base plate is just these quick attach uh, hooks for the tow bar. So these just slide in and we attach our tow bar here with the pin. All right, well, that only took you, what, five hours to finish? It's like <laughs> almost dark now. <laughs> yeah, it was a perfect Sunday. So we finished the base plate today. We still have to finish all of the wiring. So we're gonna do that on another day, uh, probably next weekend, yep. but at least we got the base plate done. All right, well, thank you all for watching and be sure to hit that subscribe button.